David Bordwell poses the question, what enables movies to activate our senses, make us think and make us feel when considering cognitive approaches to film? The puzzle film feature that is its non-sequential temporal and spatial structure makes us, the viewer, consider a world that is a departure from how we usually view it, activating our senses with multiple levels of reality. Our prior knowledge of reality is challenged. To understand the features of puzzle film, I will be dissecting Michael Gondry's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Particularly restricted narration uses a plot device as means of non-sequential storytelling. For example, Leonard's amnesia in Memento, the narrator's personality disorder in Fight Club, or Trevor's insomnia in The Machinist. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind uses Joel's memory procedure as means to restrict his own narrative. Other types of narratives include network and non-linear. Bordwell calls complex films the third era of Hollywood narrative experimentation, and so I argue that whilst a new stylistic genre of puzzle film arrived in post-classical Hollywood in the mid-90s, self-referential experimentation was not only present in putative classical cinema, but film noir, foreign cinema and modernist cinema for decades. I argue that modernist cinema is most closely linked to the modern puzzle film, as modernism is also characterised by fragmentation, stylistic innovation, anti-realism and formal complexity. To be self-reflexive is to draw attention to the film's own unsystematic textual structure, a defining trait of a puzzle film. As Nicholas Lerman puts it, a reflexive device is prescribed to provide a critical and intellectual distance that frees the viewer from delusion. We, the viewers, are freed from Joel's delusion as he steps through his own memories, commenting and reacting as if he too is an outsider. When explaining his theory of self-reference, Lerman speaks of a system that is only operationally but not structurally closed, a system that becomes more complex by trying to render its environment more meaningful. Comfortable? What we're doing here, Mr. Barish, is actually creating a map of your brain. Okay. If we apply this theory to eternal sunshine, we can view Joel's psyche as a system. Eternal Sunshine serves two narratives, pre-Operation Joel and post-Operation Joel. The movie begins with post-Operation Joel, however, once he decides to pursue a relationship with Clementine, the film cuts to pre-Operation Joel, whom is already through his breakup with Clementine. From here, the film follows a typical three-act structure. Joel faces a dilemma, which is whether or not to go through with the memory erasure. Throughout Act 2, Joel walks through his subconscious, interacting with his memories, aware that he is in an altered reality, another common theme of puzzle movies. His reawakening occurs when he decides to cool off the procedure, and so we enter Act 3. A plan is made to escape the procedure, but the film reaches its climax as all his efforts turn out to be hapless and he forgets Clementine. We then return to post-Operation Joel, and he finishes another arc in much quicker succession. The subplots of the film, Clementine's relationship with Patrick, and Mary and Dr. Miazwak's relationship serve as the driving forces of the main plot. They are the ultimate opposition alongside the memory procedure itself. Multiple endings were filmed, including ones in which Joel and Clementine decide to go their separate ways. I believe the original ending served the puzzle genre the best, as it implies a cyclical narrative. Perhaps at some point in the future, Joel and Clementine will break up, get their memories erased, discover each other again, and so on. To conclude, I believe Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind serves the puzzle genre very efficiently, with split narratives as well as a self-awareness that abides by Lerman's theory of self-reflexive system complexity. It draws attention to the filmmaking process as if Joel too is also watching a movie. The balance of mystery and knowledge fed to us as an audience gives us a puzzle to solve.